Hey, what's up, metal and heavy music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and today we're talking about metal hardcore legends Hatebreed and their eighth album, Weight of the False Self, via Nuclear Blast Records. And hey, if you like to be kept up to date with the best and brightest metal bands and albums from the underground and above, then stick with me by hitting that subscribe button down below. Now, I'm going to level with you, y'all. I have not listened to a full Hatebreed album since maybe 2004 when I was still in high school. They're a band I've always enjoyed in passing, but I just never became one of the diehard fanboys. That said, I feel like this actually gives me a somewhat unique perspective coming into this one more or less blind to the last plus 15 years of their evolution. So my first reaction to lead single and opening track Instinctive Slaughterlust? What evolution? <laughs> if you ask me, save for some improvements in production, these guys are still very much the same band I listened to on my Disman walking the halls in my Jenko jeans with frosted tips. And let me be clear, that's not a knock on the band in the slightest. If anything, I'm actually impressed that after all this time, not only have they stuck to the same mission statement, but also maintained the same youthful energy of bands with members 20 years younger than them. So I started to ask myself, why this band? What is it about Hatebreed's approach that has allowed them to remain so remarkably consistent over the years? And when it comes down to it, I really do think it has a lot to do with their message. Whereas many, if not most, bands in the metal genre, especially in 2020, have focused on themes of world collapse and resulting pessimistic outlook, Hatebreed continue to preach self-determination and positive action in their lyrics, even putting it front and center with titles like Set It Right, Start With Yourself, Cling To Life, Dig Your Way Out, and This I Earned. I've long since grown out of the immature F the world attitude of my teens and even early 20s. So while those negative foundations have made some of my favorite albums from that era feel dated, the idea of self-efficacy only becomes more relevant in my adult years. Whenever I think of Jamie Josta, I don't really think vocalist. I think motivational speaker. I mean, let's be honest, it's not their dime a dozen scream technique that draws me to Jamie or Henry Rollins, for that matter. It's their words. In a world where reading most of the gobbledygook on social media leaves me feeling absolutely drained, listening to Weight of the False Self makes me feel hopeful, powerful, and capable of positive change in both myself and the world around me. And even when the real world strife enters the lyrics, it's always framed in terms of how we overcome it and learn something in its wake. In A Stroke of Red, for instance, Jamie cautions about the concept of an eye for an eye, quoting the man himself on these lyrics, that leaves everyone blind. Once you go that dark, violent path, there is no turning back. This song is a dark canvas, leaving my body to exact terrible things on a different plane, and coming back to myself in order to learn from it so that you don't ever give in to that dark, carnal desire. Even Eloran Cantor's album artwork alludes to this message of growth through conflict, depicting a chiseled bust cracking through the clay of turmoil, but with a light shining so brightly from within as to be blinding to the sculptor. It's a hopeful image of us all overcoming pain even after layers of depression, anxiety, betrayal, and heartbreak have hardened on our souls. So much bleeding just to feel so numb, desires fulfilled in blasphemy. A stroke of red on this canvas of flesh. Turning to the music itself almost seems secondary at this point. I feel like Hatebreed have made it pretty clear that they don't set out to be the most innovative band out there, and that continues to ring true on this album likely to no surprise of anyone who has heard them even in passing. This group clearly has a deep love for the roots of punk and hardcore along with their heavier metal leanings. And they cling to that blueprint because one, it continues to work for them, and two, it's effective in conveying the message I just described. But even though I listen to these guitar riffs, vocals, and drumming hyper aware that they are all things I've heard a million times before, I'm never bored. Again, thanks to the primal energy and passion that comes across in the delivery, it's nothing but good vibes. 
I listen to newer material from bands like Slayer, and it feels very phoned in to me. I don't really believe that they believe what they're saying anymore. But for Jamie and company, every word, every note, every drum strike feels 100% genuine. If you wanna make a difference in the world, it means you have to be different from the world you see. So is Weight of the False Self one of the best albums of the year? Musically, not by a long shot, but is it worth your time? Absolutely. We all need those albums that help us carry the weight of the world we often feel on our shoulders, and this album is quite specifically designed for that purpose. With that in mind, the ratings here are almost irrelevant, but just putting them out there, I give it a 9 for enjoyability, an 8 for musicianship, and a 7 for innovation. So an 8 overall and a B- for weight of the false self objectively, but honestly, I feel like this one deserves a fourth scale for, like, motivational impact, and that would be a score of 11. In any case, get it via Nuclear Blast Records. Y'all, thanks as always for watching, and let me know down in the comments what you thought of this album, and maybe let me know what's your favorite Hatebreed album, what's the album that I should go back to that I've probably missed. You also might want to check out my interview with Finn McKenty of the Punk Rock NBA on the podcast, as we talked about these themes in depth from a psychological perspective, and Hatebreed even came up. And hey, just stick around in general, because I got plenty more album reviews, tier lists, and other content for you to check out, so plenty of reasons for you to subscribe, again, if you're not already. That'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus, signing off. I'll see you in the trenches.